Hi everybody, it's time to do the oil change on the boat's engines. Now our engines are Volvo D260s. They're little 60 horsepower, four cylinder, turbocharged diesels. Kind of interesting little engine. I think they come over from tractor engines. They're pretty straightforward to work on and an oil change on these engines. And I think most of these engines in this class are pretty straightforward. We're just going to need a few things here. I think we're needing about two and a half gallons of oil. I have a brand new oil filter. Of course, this is a Volvo Penta oil filter. I always want to get the manufacturer's oil filter. Some extra bags because the oil filter is actually mounted on the side of the engine can get a little messy. Same thing with these pads here as well. Really helpful helpful for picking up extra oil and things. And we're going to be swapping out the pads that are under the engine as well. And this guy here. So this is, this is pretty cool. So on these engines, the engine is low enough that it's difficult to get under there and pull a drain plug and get a whole pan under there and everything. So the way you get the oil out's a little different. They actually have a tube down there that you can insert a tube from this guy into, and this is a little vacuum chamber, and it will pull the oil up and out and into this reservoir. Works really, really well. Unfortunately, though, it's not quite enough capacity for the entire engine, so that's what our red bucket is for. We'll probably have to do an intermediate pour on that. Not the end of the world. And the rest of the stuff's just sort of standard, right? So we have uh, some rags and things, uh, definitely our gloves. I always use a little bit of silicone paste when I put the oil filters on. Pretty straightforward. All right, well, let's get to it. I'm going to start the engine, get it going, get it warmed up, and we'll get into changing that oil. Now that the engine is good and warm, our next step is to set up our extractor. So we have this big tube here, which is going to go in the top of the extractor. And then I have a thinner tube, actually, that fits over this. And that's the one that goes to this extractor hose that's on the engine itself. So I'll walk you through that. I've got our extractor set over here. So we just pull this guy up, kind of turn it a little bit so we can get better access. Pull this guy off and we just put this guy on the top. Pretty simple. Just sort of plugs in. It doesn't turn or anything, it just sort of plugs in. All right, so that's that. Let's take the end of our big hose and I'm using this one. They give you two adapters here. What I'm using is the larger of the two. It barely fits in the extraction tube on the engine, but it does, so that's really great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the engine and see where this goes. On our engine, the extractor hose is right here, just below, a little to the left of the oil filter. So we just pull this guy off, and we take our hose from our extractor, and we just push it in here. Now we want it to go all the way down, so just keep pushing until it stops. Definitely a hard stop down there. And that's kind of what it does. It goes all the way down there to the bottom of the sump. So it is pretty much the lowest point in the engine. Really get almost all of the oil out of the engine. Our next step is going to be to pull our oil cap here because we need to let some air into the system. Just unscrew this guy. There we go. And just kind of set it aside. And the last step in all of this is actually just to pump up. You're actually putting a vacuum in this guy. And you can pump it up to 25 times. <laughs> Two, three. Now we can see our oil's already coming up. You can see it kind of going around the tube there. There it goes. Right into the extractor. Sweet. And continue pumping. <laughs> At this point, we just wait until the oil gets completely sucked out of the engine. Now, this reservoir, as I said before, is not quite large enough for the entire capacity of the engine. So we will have to do sort of a mid-stage pour into our bucket. Then we'll reset everything up and pull the rest of it out. I'm going to stop things here and, and pour all of this out first, and we'll start again. There's a little relief valve up here you can use to break the vacuum. You just push that guy. And I'll let all the vacuum out. All right, and that'll stop it. In the instructions, they're pretty clear. They don't want you to tip this thing up so far that you completely swamp the head with oil. So you want to kind of pour it out a little slowly. That's good enough for now. We'll go ahead and put this back in, hook it all back up again, and suck out the rest of the oil out of the engine. Okay, I think that's about it. At this point, we can pull our tube out. Be careful, there's just a little bit of oil on the end of it, and it's going to want to dribble. There we go, grab that. And we'll want to hold our hose up. 
this is the point in which you really get oil kind of everywhere it seems so uh, this was <laughs> this thing can fling all over the place and just sort of spray oil so you have to be a little bit careful of it since we're done down here we can go ahead and put our cap back on here so a good way to evacuate the tubes on this thing i found is just to hook it back up and just set up a little bit of vacuum here and get this thing to pull as much of this oil back into the reservoir as possible. If you like this content, consider subscribing to our channel. If you want real-time updates and benefits, consider another level and become a patron. It really helps us out. Now this hose inside here has an actual little spring or a wire in here so it won't kink over. So you'll always see a little bit of oil sitting inside of it, but I think that's pretty good actually. Our next step is gonna to be to do the actual oil filter. And this is a bit of a bummer and pretty messy just because it's on the side of the engine. I've got one of these towels here that I'm gonna put underneath it and I've got a bag and I'll show you what the bag's for, it's kind of cool. We're gonna place our pad underneath here under this bit right here, the oil's gonna kinda go a little nutty here. Before I pull the old oil filter, I wanna prep the new one because I wanna pull that old one off and get that new one on as fast as possible. I always like to use a little bit, just a, just a kiss of silicone grease on these gaskets. I know that they say you should put engine oil on them, but I think this really helps them not carbon bond themselves to the engine and you can get these filters off in the future. I think it really helps. There we go, just a little kiss, that's all we need. So I mentioned the bag. The whole trick is just to put the bag over the filter as you pull it out. But I've also found that it's pretty hard to get the oil filter started with the bag on it. So I try to get it started. Once it starts, feels like it's starting to turn, it's not really gonna leak. Then I put the bag over it and then I can work it with the bag over it. It should be loose enough. These better be loose enough to come off by hand. Put this over it and try to get it down as far as possible here. All right, and then just spin this guy off. There it goes. All right. We can catch a bit of the oil here as well in our bag. That really helps. Now with our bag still in place here, now's the time to put the new filter on. I'm just going to seat that for now. Pull this out. And see? Very little leakage. Not bad. 90% of it's in the bag, so that's great. One very important thing to do when you put on your oil filter is take a Sharpie and put the date and the hours on it. So today is actually July 4th. So I'm gonna write the date on it and I'm gonna write the hours. I'm gonna do it on two sides of the filter and I'll show you why in a second. So let's see, so I'm gonna write July 4th, 2023. And the hours are 161. So now that we've got that written on the oil filter, and the oil filter is really just seated. The instructions say to just roll this thing after it seats to just about another 180 degrees, so another half turn. All right, that's probably enough actually. It feels pretty tight to me. And I'm gonna write it again. Just so it's in two different places, it's a lot easier to find. All right, so there's our date and hours on the oil filter. That's very important because that's the service interval on the engine. They do it by hours and then they also do it by like years. So the engine really should get its oil changed every year regardless of hours, but then it should also be, I believe it's every 200 hours you're supposed to change the oil. So that's why you wanna have the hours on there and the date. And that's all we dripped. Really not bad at all. The bag method is awesome because it just really keeps this drippage down to a minimum. Now the next step of course is to clean everything up. We wanna make sure it's totally clean because how would we ever know if we had a leak if we don't clean everything first? So just, I'm just gonna go down and just clean up underneath everything. Just make sure everything's nice and clean. So I forgot one step. I'm gonna back up a little bit before we go too much further. And that is it's always a great idea to fill your oil filter a little bit before you put it on. Now with these engines with the oil filters on the side of it, you can't put a huge amount of oil in the oil filter. Obviously you just pour it right back out. But it is important because the oil pump in here is gonna to have to fill that oil filter up. That means the engine's gonna be starved for oil during that time. So more help you can give it, the more you can put in the oil filter, the better. So I'm gonna pull the oil filter back off again. That's no big deal. Just pour a little bit of oil in here. That's probably enough. Just enough to get it going. With our oil filter back on, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with oil. This is the first gallon of this. All right, well that's the first gallon down. Let's go ahead and put the second gallon in. We're not quite through our second gallon, but I do wanna check our level at this point, see where we are. Make sure it's seated all the way. 
We'll back out, see where we are. It's a little hard to see, but it's just barely, it's right below the first notch. So we definitely need to add a little more. I'll go ahead and finish off this gallon. You know, funny, if you do overfill the engine, it's not the end of the world because you can literally suck it right back out, just like you did when you were pulling the old oil out. You don't have to get too crazy about it, but we do want our oil level to be right in between those two marks. And we definitely don't want it over the top mark. So we'll continue with this gallon and see where we are after that. See about how much we have to add. And since we've already filled up our oil filter a bit, it's really not gonna take all that much oil. So probably shoot for the halfway mark, maybe a little bit above it to fill up that oil filter. We should be right where we need to be. And that's actually really close. We're really close to the halfway mark there. So maybe we'll kind of throw just a little bit more in to, to compensate for that oil filter. All right, let's go with that. I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean our cap a little bit as well. Just, they can always get a little grimy. Just wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Super important. And for the gasket on here, you wanna inspect it. This one looks fine. It's just a black O-ring, but it's in good shape. And it's gonna get the same treatment that the oil filter got. So just a little bit of silicone paste here. Just a little bit around here, just to help lubricate that seal. All right, put our cap back on. We'll do one more check on the oil level. And our level is just below the top mark, so that's a good place to be. All right, now before we start the engine and do our final checks, I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean under there a little bit and replace those pads. We have a bunch of these pads. I call them sort of uh, engine diapers. They're great for absorbing oil and things and they're just the right size actually to fold in half and slip underneath the engine. So these things are great. And this is a great time to swap these things out. All right, well, we're all set here. Next step is gonna be to start up the engine, run it, get it warm again. Then we turn it off and we wait about 15 minutes before we check the oil for the final time. One little bonus step that I like to do, since I'm already dirty, I'm already in the engine bay, is to take a little bit of Corrosion X and just hit things inside here that look like they're, they're rusting, starting to rust, or whatever. So anything that needs it. Uh, a great place to start here would be, for instance, our, our Heim joint, our rose joint here. Just wanna coat this guy. That's all we wanna do is just give it a good coating. I just don't want any of this to rust. And then down here on the turbo, the little bolts that hold the turbo together, here I noticed are starting to think about rusting, so I'm just gonna hit them a little love. And that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna go through and hit a bunch of things in the engine bay and just give them a little bit of love here. Just a great thing to do while you're there and while you're into it. It sure does sound good, nice and smooth. Holy cow, no vibration either. It's really running well. And because these are turbocharged engines, I always let them idle for a little bit before I shut them off. I think it's really important to let the turbo spool down, let it get some good, nice oil through it, try to cool it off a little bit. This is all something I learned from having an old 1982 Saab 900 turbo. Really super cool car, but it taught me about turbos and taught me you have to respect them and make sure you warm them up and warm them down. All right, I think that's good. We'll go ahead and stop the engine. There it goes. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is just wait for the engine to kind of cool down for about 15 minutes. Really want all that oil to drain back down into the sump so you can get a proper reading. And once that's done, I'm gonna do a final oil level check. And if it's a little low, I'll add a little, but I think we're right where we need to be. So I think that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. We love it when you write comments down there. If you got any questions or anything, let us know what you're thinking down there. If I screwed something up, let me know. I'm always open to that as well. So, all right. Well, thanks again for watching and until next time, safe travels. Bye. Join us next time when Franny shows you how to install a fancy bidet and you won't need any electricity whatsoever. There it goes. Look at that. And that's the other one.